It's October here in Colorado, and with that comes cooler weather, fewer crowds, and the beautiful changing colors. We're hanging out here along the beautiful river walk in Canyon City, Colorado, about 45 miles southwest of Colorado Springs. A city of just over 17,000 people built alongside the Arkansas River. Canyon City is best known for tourism, with ample hiking trails, whitewater rafting, rock climbing, and the Royal Gorge train and bridge. However, there is a darker side to Canyon City, one you might not know. In today's special Halloween episode, we bring you four haunting tales from cemeteries, prisons, and even a monastery. What was that? Did you hear that? <laughs> Nearly 125 years ago, geologists discovered dinosaur remains in the Garden Park fossil area just north of Canyon City, Colorado. They aren't, however, the only bones buried inside the city. The Abbey of the Holy Cross started in 1886 when two monks left Pennsylvania to establish a monastic community here in Colorado. In 1924, the community outgrew its original settlement and moved here to Canyon City. The construction of the Abbey of the Holy Cross was difficult and dangerous. Built mainly by prisoners, it was unlikely that on-site deaths were reported or recorded. The possibility of prisoners' spirits being trapped inside the abbey they were forced to build forever remains. of dark corridors throughout the abbey provide plenty of hiding places for the paranormal to occupy. The basement taunts all those who enter with an unpleasant energy. Chanting can sometimes be heard late at night as if rituals never ceased after the abbey closed in 1985. The darkest energy, however, comes from the secret passageway that connects the basement of the monastery to Ullathorn Hall, which allowed monks to travel through the community undetected. Are these tales of haunting the prisoners killed during construction? 
Or do the ghosts of monks continue to wander the halls, their souls trapped underground, forever destined to haunt those who dare to walk the hall? This is Greenwood Cemetery. Woodpecker Hill is the nickname of the Lonely Bluff up at the back of the cemetery overlooking the Civil War era headstones of some of Canyon City's earliest pioneers. Greenwood Cemetery is the final resting spot for some of the most influential settlers who helped to shape the local economy, politics, and culture. You can find miners, politicians, religious leaders, socialites, veterans, and business people among the graves. However, up on Woodpecker Hill, you'll find cactus and brush grown over the graves. The graves where dead prisoners rest. You see, these prisoners did not have the care of family or friends who were willing or able to give them a proper burial after death. Instead, a simple plaque made out of cedar was used. Woodpeckers hammered the grave markers into splinters to get at the bugs that made the cheap cedar headstones their home. Eventually, these cheap headstones were replaced by the license plates you see today, which were made by inmates working in the Colorado State Prison System. Many say these prisoners haunt the cemetery to this day. Take James Armstrong, who once bit a nurse in the throat. He vowed that upon his death, he would be set free, which was a frightening prospect to those who feared him. To prevent that from happening, a superstitious warden ordered a cell door be buried over his coffin in August of 1903. The warden believed the cell door would prevent his spirit from escaping and haunting them forever. While we couldn't find James Armstrong's grave, during our research, we found that a metal detector did prove this rural legend true. This is Phantom Canyon. We bring you back to the late 1800s and Phantom Canyon. At the time, this canyon served as the home of a narrow gauge railroad line, twisting its way through a 30 mile trek from Cripple Creek to Canyon City. This line serviced over 500 gold mines in the area and at one time was one of the busiest in the country. This route offers spectacular views of mountain meadows, ponderosa pine forest, pinyon juniper, and choya cactus, and is well worth the drive if you ever find yourself in Canyon City. In today's story, we take you to this small stretch of Phantom Canyon Road known as Eight Mile Creek. Rising and dropping over 4,000 feet, railroad engineers excelled at navigating these sharp and narrow turns against steep, unguarded drop-offs. One railroad crew in the late 1890s witnessed one haunting tale they will never forget. You see, this crew was on the night run towards Cripple Creek when they spotted a man walking along the tracks, his prison number clearly visible on his back. Upon arriving to Canyon City, the crew alerted the Colorado prison system of this escaped convict. However, what they were told shocked them as this very prisoner had been executed only a few days prior. 
This story had been shared so many times that by the early 1900s, this stretch gained its current name of Phantom Canyon. Prisons are Canyon City's biggest industry. With more than 10 correctional facilities here in Fremont County, including this one here behind us. In fact, 20 minutes away is ADX, a maximum security prison that houses some of the scariest prisoners alive, including El Chapo, the Mexican drug cartel leader, 2013 Boston Marathon bomber, and Terry Nichols, the Oklahoma City bomber. This prison behind us was originally a women's prison built in 1935 and housed some of the country's most notorious female inmates. The prison eventually closed and sat empty until it was converted into the museum you see here today. We're here at the Colorado Prisons Museum, and while filming was not allowed inside, we were able to get some still photos. Many of the exhibits are creepy, to say the least. With a once working gas chamber, replicas of cells, and some of the original art of inmates housed there. But perhaps the creepiest part of this museum are the tales of spirits of inmates past. Visitors have reported creepy events such as screams and coughs, mysterious orbs, and even the scent of fresh tobacco. Did you smell the tobacco back there? No. I swear, I smelled it and there was nobody around me. I looked. You're sure it wasn't the leather room? No. So, is the prison museum haunted? In our research, we found one quote from a former prison guard that may shed some light. Well, I've never seen anything either exactly. Not like an actual ghost, but I've seen things I can't explain and heard things like voices and stuff when I shouldn't have. I've seen a lot of things in my time and I'm not one to believe in ghosts, but what I saw there yeah, I'm inclined to think it's haunted. You're free. <laughs> Busted out <laughs> with a baby. Haunted? Maybe, maybe not. 
but walking around inside, I definitely got an eerie feeling and I felt some chills in some of the cells. And I don't know if it was learning about the actual history of what happened in those spaces that was creepy or if there really are haunted spirits. You'll have to come check it out yourself to decide if it's haunted or not. Buddy, what did you already do to get locked up behind bars? <laughs> <gasps> it's a tarantula. Where? Right out there. Right outside our door. That thing is huge. Do we kill it? No. 